So I will now call the case of 124998 and council may uh, approach the lectern. May it please the court, Linda J. Lobmeyer on behalf of the Finney County Commission. I'd like to reserve uh, three minutes of rebuttal. Three minutes is reserved. Thank you. Justices, thank you again for traveling to our Southwest Kansas neck of the woods. This case boils down to uh, the Kansas Court of Appeals. We applied for cert based on their ruling. In that case, they found themselves duty bound by what the what what the Finney County Commission would characterize as dicta. Um, that dicta has repeated itself throughout a string of case law, and that dicta goes back to a case uh, called Crumbacker. When you go back to that case, there are multiple ways to distinguish the case. Uh, first of all, that case in particular determined whether or not a municipality can bypass zoning procedures through an annexation agreement. Of course, this court ruled that it could not. And in that uh, case, they went on to say and make the statement that um, the power to change the zoning of property, which includes issuing special use permits, can only be exercised in conformity with the statute. We're not asking this court to overturn that principle. Obviously, it's our contention that the Finney County zoning ordinances comply with the statute. This case never addresses specifically 12755. I think that particular statute is particularly important in this court's analysis. In that statute, it gives the municipalities, including counties, the authority to come up with um, a framework or a procedure for issuing conditional use permits. And I don't think any of the case law in, in my reading of it has never actually addressed this issue at hand. And the specific, Counselor, yeah. Before we get into the statutes and the case law, can you address the order that we sent out a few weeks ago asking whether this case is moot because, you know, whether the uh, permit is, is uh, valid. I was unaware of that. I did not see that. Well, let's, oh, okay. Let's, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but listen, is the 2021 permit still valid under these regulations? Because as I read the regulations, it says that permits shut, like, must expire after one year. Right. So, so that, no, okay. I, I, I didn't receive that request, but uh, I would say it isn't moot. The, those uh, conditional use permits, as long as uh, it goes into continuous use, and as long as the um, as long as the sand in this in this particular case, the sand quarry has started its work, it stays in place. I guess that's probably at least something that may be addressed. However, this issue is going to repeat itself if. The court doesn't make a ruling today or in the future with regard to this issue because Finney County still has the same zoning regulations. It still has the same uh, procedure for issuing conditional use permits that hasn't been revoked at this time. Well, what, what draws our attention to it, and I'm sorry you don't have this, but a lot of things have uh, gone awry in the last couple of weeks, but uh, I want to draw your attention, I'm sure you've got it over there, to a zoning regulation section 28.080. And what it says is, all conditional use permits shall be valid for one year from the date it was approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals if the project has not been substantially completed within one year of approval, the conditional use permit shall expire. All right. Um, I so, I, to me, I read that, and that tells me that these permits have one year. Right. But in this instance, and in, in several instances, they're going to be able to renew that so long as the sand quarry is still active and they haven't finished um, doing their quarry of that sand area. Yeah. So, 
yes, it, technically it could expire. Technically, they will need to go back to the neighborhood zoning and development and reapply or um, they, they may continue to need to renew that permit. But, but often, I mean, honestly, often in conditional use permits, those projects aren't necessarily finished as the as the zoning uh, regulations refer to they're not they're often not finished within a year and that's not uncommon for that to happen in that way and are you suggesting then that those parties do not come back and have a renewal process they do have a renewal process and yes what happened with this 2021 permit with this 21 one um i don't have that knowledge i apologize I, I, I apologize. I didn't get the note regarding the question of its mootness. So, N nevertheless, uh, I'll return back to Krumbacher. Um Let me ask you about Krum yeah. Krumbacher. Sure. You said that, you know, there's that sentence in there that everybody's animated about. Um, making a reference to conditional use permits, but here's my operating theory. You say it's dicta. I'm not sure I agree with that for this reason. In Crumbacher, what the city of DeSoto did not only was contrary to the county zoning and all that, that's why they were going through the process, but what they were trying to do actually violated their own regulations is the way I read that decision. It's a little subtle, but because of that, what the county or what the, I'm sorry, what the city was trying to do was completely contrary to all the procedures that had occurred prior to that. So the idea that they could uh, circumvent it through this annexation agreement uh, is a little odd to begin with. Plus, those own those. If I read the case, those regulations that the city adopted required you to go back to the planning board, and that, in contrast, Finney County doesn't have that. Everything Finney County did is absolutely within the provisions of the regulations, and as I also read it, within the provisions of the statute. It's, you know, it's not until you try to bootleg in uh, Krumbacher and that Manley case that the words start to morph. Right. At least and, in the view of the Court of Appeals. Right. And and actually, Justice Biles, I think that is a, a very good point in this situation, because I think you can also read Krumbacher and what it says as not being dicta, but very specific to the situation that they're talking about here. And you're right. The the heft that that particular statement was given was added on to as the case law goes on and in the the unpublished opinions that are cited it, it they just keep elevating those words and saying we have long held that uh conditional use permits or special use permits are a zoning change they they inflate the actual meaning in there which is never in statutes uh 12, 12 757 never mentions conditional use permits despite the fact that the phrase was used uh in 755 or in yeah in 12 755 and despite the fact that as the dissenting opinion from the appellate court points out um chapter 19 regulating counties has a statute that does require the urban counties to follow 757. And I think that's also a, an extremely important point here is that the legislature has required it of certain counties by statute. That, that requirement by statute is not placed upon all counties. It's, re, it's placed upon the urban counties being Sedgwick and, count, and, and Johnson County. And so I, I, I wonder, uh, and, I wonder whether or not some of the cases, and especially Crumbacher and Manley, both originating out of Johnson County, in actuality, 757 does apply to their conditional use of permits. It does apply to their special use permits and, and the requirements. Um, but, but the legislature and the statutes under the zoning ordinances allow for the uh, 
for each of the individual municipalities, counties to make their own zoning ordinances and to make their own rules regarding conditional use permits. Um, I think it's also telling or, or that conditional use permits, special use permits are only defined in zoning ordinances for the localities. They're not defined by statute. And so it, it's a curious uh, conclusion for the court to come to that 757 would, and, and the, the procedure there would apply to a conditional use permit, given that there's no definition, standardized definition for what that is. Um, I just think that's an illogical conclusion. If the, if the county and the municipality are defining what it is, it seems to me that they should also have the authority and the ability, um, as the League of Municipalities pointed out through home rule, uh, they have the ability to um, make those rules for themselves. And in, in, in keeping with the spirit of the community, the, the nature of the zoning that's going on and the changes that are going on in their, their own locales. Can I, can I get a <clears throat> kind of a, a big picture here of what happens with a conditional use permit in Finney County and, and in other counties that subject to the conditional permit allowances and the rules that county set up for, for that. And that is, I'm just curious about the compatibility with what is already zoned. This this particular parcel was zoned agricultural. Correct. And this conditional use was for a sand and gravel pit and operation. And it just seems so foreign to what the zoning is originally contemplated for and the people that live around there. And, and, have, have, and I understand it's your position that you followed your protocol of your county and, and that, but how much of abs, absent the exceptions that the that conditional use permits are, are not permitted through statute uh, mining operations? This seems closer to like a mining operation to me than it does any kind of agricultural use. And is that a factor in, in any of this? I think it's a factor in what uh, the zoning regulations were and how they were designed. Uh, obviously, the conditional use permit is is allowed for the sand quarry under agricultural understood. zoning, right? And you understand that. Um, maybe one of the specific geographic issues that the court should understand in Finney County and through much of uh, Southwest Kansas, the Arkansas River runs through, and that's primarily where this is close to and where it's being quarried. Um, those lands abut uh, a lot of agricultural lands and that's where uh, and and why uh, the zoning regulations allow it in an agricultural location. So for instance, Pierceville is probably geographically maybe a, a, even less than a mile maybe from from where the the river crosses and and primarily those sand quarries fall along that riverbed. I have a question about uh, regulation section 4.030, which refers to conditional uses. And um, it says the following uses and structures may be permitted, number six, state approved and sand and gravel quarries. Um, I'm not sure what the and is there for, state approved and sand and gravel quarries. Is that an extra word? Are they supposed to be state approved sand and gravel quarries? And if so, was this, this one? I would read that as as including a both uh, state approved and uh, I, that would be how I would resolve that question is that because any sand quarry has to be approved by the state. That's um, an automatic procedure that they have to go through the KDHE for, um, I think, for it's the KDHE that does that um, and, and per, gives those permits for the sand quarry to um, continue. And so along the way on the procedure, you may have someone asking for a conditional use permit uh, prior to actually getting their permit from uh, the, the, the KDHE for the sand pit. And so... Maybe that's why that is. Of course, that's looking back uh, at something that was drawn up in 1995. So I, I don't, 
no, but that's how I would resolve that tension there. So, so I mean, if you if you thought about it as a as a, the sand company applying for a conditional use permit, they can apply for that conditional use permit prior to having the proper permits, but they will need to have the proper permits before they can actually exercise that conditional use. I have one question coming back to my earlier question about. Uh, but I want to ask it just in terms of what's actually happening, as far as you know. Is the sand and gravel operation currently operational? My memory at this point is that it is, they have not gone into Finney County. Part of that is that I think uh, they, as we all are, are bound by the ruling uh, from the Court of Appeals at this time. And I believe probably counsel for Huber Sand has advised them not to, to do that. However, just to, it, so it's it's it abuts Gray County this piece of land also. So I know that the sand quarry in Gray County, which is directly next to it, has already started and is and is in operation. But in Finney County, there is no operation. It's not started. N no, but. The, uh, no, but the road is out there. the The quarry equipment is out there due to it and being in no Gray County. Permit beyond the 2021 permit. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't there's hear. No you. permit past the 21 2021 permit that we are currently discussing. I I don't have enough information to answer that question. I'm sorry. During the, during the. Uh, your time before you come back for rebuttal. Why don't you uh, take a gl glancing look at 28.080 in your regulations. Let me know whether you think that permit can live past one year. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. May it please the court, Patrick Edwards, on behalf of American Warrior and Brian Price. I'd like to start off by addressing a few of the, the questions that came up um, just a second ago. And the first is with respect to the court's question about whether the, the CUP in this case has expired for failing to substantially complete the project. The, the CUP was for a, a sand and gravel quarry. And I think it's important to know um, there, are, there are two tracks at issue here. One is in Finney County, directly next to Pierceville. Um, and it's literally directly next to Pierceville. And then that track directly abuts the county line to Gray County. And then right next to there, there's a Gray County parcel. The CUP in Gray County followed the correct two-part process from 757 and was granted. And so the, the sand and gravel operations currently, the actual mining is going on in, in Gray County. And to our understanding, there's been no gravel, sand or gravel mined in Finney County. There is a road that's been constructed on the Finney County tract. There's a portable office that's been uh, placed on the Finney County tract, and they've stored some machinery and equipment on the Finney County tract. But there's been no actual mining on Finney County. The other thing is uh, the the CUP part of the part of the conditions that the BZA imposed was that a, uh, a, a fence with barbed wire be built on the, the outside of the tract in Finney County and that there be trees planted as well. It's our understanding that there was, for, you know, for a year and a day after this uh, permit was issued, there was, no, there was no fence that was constructed, no trees that were planted. And in fact, it's our understanding that just recently within the last few months, there was a fence that was started to be built but as part of the construction process, um, there was a line that was hit that, that ran into one of the, the neighbor's houses in Pierceville, a gas line. And so they stopped construction. So it's my understanding at least that to this day, the fence has not been completed. No trees have been planted. No sand or gravel has been mined. So it's our position that the, the permit has expired for failure to substantially complete the project uh, as, the, as the zoning regulations state. But um, council that, that, that strikes me as a factual question that may not be before us. 
I, I think my question, and maybe some of the questions I'm hearing from the other justices, is whether the permit has expired by operation of law because its term lasts only for one year. So it, could they begin a, a gravel operation tomorrow without returning um, for a new permit or approval? It's our position that, that they need to go and apply for a brand new permit at this point. Council, can I, while you're answering Justice Wall's question, can I ask just a basic housekeeping? Did you guys get a copy of this order from us to be prepared for the mootness? Yes, I did. Know. Okay. So at least somebody got it. Great. Yeah. So I have following up on, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. My question is pretty quick. Why is what happened in Gray County even relevant here? Just that, that there's, I don't think it is, to be honest with you. I think the right. issue is finished. Thank County. you. So to follow up, um, based on your argument that as a matter of law, this permit expired, um, why wouldn't this case then be moot? We believe it is moot. Um, we, we believe the petition for review is moot. Okay, so you're you are taking a position that that this is a moot case and we no longer have jurisdiction to hear it. We're taking that position, um, but because we would like some finality on this, at the same time, if if the court were so inclined to issue an opinion on the merits, we would invite that. Well, so uh, let me ask one more follow up. So our mootness um, doctrines do speak about exceptions for cases of high public importance that are subject to repeatability. Um, and I guess my question is, is this one of those circumstances? Um, and I guess the worry would be if these permits expire as a matter of law after one year, you know, the issues may never get to a court. So do, do you see that? Do, does that make sense as a question? I, I think so. It's... It's unclear to us as to whether or not this can be uh, subject to repetition. And the reason is, is because um, if if this matter goes back to Finney County and, and the Court of Appeals ruling is enforced, that would require this process to go, or the, the CUP to go before the Planning Commission, which it's never gone before, for a recommendation, and then go to the County Commission for a final vote. Um, including the county before kept one of the county commissioners that represents Pierceville. And so we don't know as a practical matter, given that it's going to before completely different bodies, um, including an elected body that time, what, whether the outcome is going to be the same, the CUP very well can be denied the second go around. Let me follow up with that because uh, you conditioned that on uh, embracing the rationale of the Court of Appeals. But if, if my math is right and my reading of the Finney County regulations is correct. The permit expired on July 20th, 2022. Court of Appeals didn't issue its decision until February 10th of 2023. And under our case law, the Court of Appeals opinion goes away because it didn't have jurisdiction because the case was moved unless one of the exceptions then would apply. So let me give you the hypothetical that if the Court of Appeals decision goes away too, does your answer change to Justice Stegall's question about whether this is subject to repetition? It very well could be. <laughs> and and again, that's why we would, in that instance, we would ask for a, a decision on the merits. Um, yes. Would it be subject to repetition if a party who knew they had an expiring conditional use permit simply took the additional step of asking for the, it to be renewed. And that, that it seems to me to be the fundamental, the root problem of all this mootness discussion is just what, why wasn't the conditional use permit renewed? So I'm sorry, I could not hear that. Why answer. wasn't the conditional use permit renewed? I, it's, we don't have the conditional use permit. I think that would be a question for, for Huber Sand. If, your, if we're, in in your opening kind of uh, statement to us, you referred to this as a mining operation. Did you did you seek that kind? Of, there's an exception that requires uh, an additional step to be taken in the in the uh, 
in the conditional use permit statutes that specify that mining operations are different and distinct from sand and gravel operations and other types of, of conditional use permits. Did you did you seek to utilize that exception or was there ever did the court ever deal with that? I couldn't find that the court ever took that question up. The, the court the court didn't take that question up, but I, I will tell you that um KSA 12 757 little a, so not subsection A, but little a is the statute immediately following um, 757. And in, in that statute, it requires a majority. Uh, it, it essentially says that it, it, for, for a mining operation, it's gotta be a majority vote of the governing body. Um, sand and gravel quarry is a mining operation and, um, and there was no vote by a governing body in this instance. Um, the, the CUP went before the BZA, and only the BZA, the governing body in Finney County is the is the county commission, and this and this CUP never went before the governing body, so there was never a vote at all by the governing body, and so we believe that it does fail under 757. Little, little a. So it, let me ask you, um, just so I can understand, because uh, you're the expert in this area, so I'm going to tap in to your knowledge. So the difference between, explain to me the difference between an amendment to a zoning regulation or a zoning code, so I guess a rezoning, and a special special use or conditional use permit. So a special use or conditional use permit, and those terms are used interchangeably, right, essentially, yeah. um, allow for land to be put towards an otherwise prohibited use um, and, the, and essentially that use is not allowed unless a CUP is issued and conditions that are imposed as part of that CUP are followed. A zoning amendment can be a number of things, uh, you know, just uh, amending the zoning regulation, whatever. But I will point out that the, the Court of Appeals majority opinion in this case went through the analysis and, 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 and essentially found based analyzing Crumbaker and also referencing Manley that this, uh, that, that a CUP is the functional equivalent of a rezoning, um, and that the Manley case inherent in the ruling in the Manley case was that a C or that it, I guess an SUP in that case was a zoning amendment, and so they are diff they, they are different functionally. But the court has analyzed this and said um, that that they're the functional equivalent that, that a CUP is the functional equivalent of a rezoning or zoning amendment, so it falls under the statute. Okay, the so let me let me ask you this: when you were talking about a special use permit or a conditional use permit. Um, you said something about unauthorized. Is that what you said? Uh, an otherwise prohibited use. Right. Well, then what's a variance? So a variance is uh, is a request to deviate from the zoning regulations. A lot of times a, a, a variance is, for example, a, a height limitation um, in, in a particular zoning district. If they have, you can not have, you know, any building beyond, you know, above three stories, where well, you can get a variance to, to deviate. What's the difference then between a special use or conditional use permit and a variance? Um, a variance they're both, you're saying they're both kind of unauthorized or violations because it's my understanding. Okay, and I don't want to really talk about the past case law and, and extracting that sentence. Oh, I would, I would you, love if we could avoid that. Right, let's just, you know, <laughs> because, you know, because we're just looking at the statutory language, okay? Um, so it's it's my understanding that a special use of a, a CUP, is that a CUP, is a use that is already conditionally authorized under the current zoning regulations but a specific criteria that's already set forth in the zoning regulations have to be met. And meeting those, you have to have the approval of whoever the approval committee is that's designated. Um, and it doesn't change or amend the regulation because the regulation says you can do this, but you gotta, you gotta do a few more things. Yeah, and I, and I think the, the dissenting opinion kind of um, in the Kansas Court of Appeals hit on this, but the the difference is, uh, in our opinion, that in the majority opinion touched on this as well, is that CUPs aren't automatically granted. In fact, they're right. denied all the time. Right. And in a CUP, essentially in zoning ordinances, there's a list of uses that that might be possible. So there's there's contemplated. Yes. 
yes, contemplated. But just because it's contemplated does not mean it's it's automatic, far from it. And that- uh, the, But do you have the, to mend the, the regulation? We believe the position of the, uh, of the case law in Kansas is that it is considered a zoning amendment. It is considered rezoning. And, and what are you relying on for that? Uh, Crumbaker, Manley. No, I don't want you to rely on those. I want, I mean, what else are you relying on? Or is that all you have? Well, to the, the definition of zoning is it, it, under Kansas statute yeah. is um, that uh, the regulation or restriction of uses of land. And certainly a CUP is, is a regulation or restriction on the uses of land. And you cannot have a use, like for example, sand and gravel quarry without a CUP, it is it is a prohibited use in that in that zoning district. You cannot have it. And so you have to go through the process of applying for a CUP. The jurisdiction has to go through. Why do we have conditional use permits then if it's the same thing as rezoning or an amendment? I don't think it's always the same. I think there are differences where, where a CUP where a CUP is considered a rezoning, but a rezoning is not always considered a CUP. There, Wait, slow that down and say it again. Okay. There, every CUP is, is, as the court has analyzed, is is considered a rezoning. Um, there are, you can have a rezoning that is not a CUP. You can, you right. can rezone property that and have it not be a CUP. Right, but if, if every CUP is a rezoning, why do we have CUPs? That's the way that the, the the jurisdictions have have decided to handle certain conditional uses that are that are otherwise prohibited without the, the going through the next the, those additional steps. Hmm. I want to take you back to the mining uh, statement that you made. These were competing motions for summary judgment, correct? Yes. It's my understanding that one of those um, uh, uh, uncontroverted facts was that. In May of 2021, Huber submitted an application for a conditional use permit or CUP to the Board of Zoning Appeals, seeking approval from the board to operate a sand and gravel quarry on the property as an approved conditional use under the regulation. It's my understanding that was a, a, a fact to which both parties agreed. Is that wrong? That they submitted a, a CUP to the BZA? For a sand and gravel quarry. Yes, yes, that's correct. You agree? Yes, I do. I'm running out of time here. Uh, one, one additional uh, point I'd like to make is the, the reference to Crumbaker being dicta and that, well, the, the facts in Crumbaker were that the zoning regulations um, applied the the they had zoning regulations that applied the two-part process that's it, it that's a red herring because whether or not the well first of all they applied ksa 12-757 to to the uh to the zoning regulations and to the facts at issue in that case and if all that mattered was what the zoning regulations say um because that's essentially the point as well the zoning regulations there match the statute um if if all that matters is the zoning regulations, then there would be no reason to analyze the statute whatsoever. You could just go off the you could just go off the zoning the local zoning regulations, um, but that's not what any of these courts have done. The three the three cases before before this court and the Kansas Supreme Court, and the five cases that we cited in our brief from the Kansas Court of Appeals, each one of them has analyzed the statute in different parts of the statute, certainly, but they've they've always consistently applied KSA twelve seven fifty seven um, to CUPs and SUPs. And and the public um, has have relied on those decisions, including um, including American Warrior and Brian Price. And so um, we just ask that that the majority ruling from the Kansas uh, Court of Appeals be affirmed, um, and uh, based on uh, based on the, the arguments asserted here today, and also in the briefs. And I'd be happy to answer any additional questions you have. I see no questions. Thank you. Lobeyer, you reserve three minutes. Uh, Justice Biles, I'll start by answering your question, and I think you're correct uh, in your reading of the zoning regulations for Finney County that it would have expired. The reason we're whether or not this is moot is that this is repeatable. Uh, every conditional use permit in the reading of, of uh, the 
the reading that the Court of Appeals um, gave to Krumbacher and its progeny and what the uh, what American Warrior is advocating for creates a situation where every conditional use permit that has been issued since 1995 has failed to follow statute and is invalid. Uh, so this is this is hugely important. I think it's also evidenced by the amicus briefs that you receive from uh, the League of Municipalities and from the Finney County or not the Finney, the county, the Kansas County Association. The, there are a lot of counties and a lot of municipalities that are using similar framework based on the authority we believe was given to them in 12755. I do want to also address, um, before I move on, uh, 757A. This is not a mining operation as de defined by Chapter 49. We disagree with that, that reading. That's uh, chapter 49 talks about surface mining, and that's a completely different um, operation than sand quarry. That's a, a different set of regulations and a different set of rules. And I, I think that's a misinterpretation of 757A to say that the sand quarry is a mining operation under that definition. Council, um, would you agree that the potential mootness problem could have been avoided had the applicant simply asked for the permit to be renewed? That is, uh, yes. So we wouldn't even need to talk about whether an, a prudential exception might apply if applicants who desire to see this issue litigated to the end took the trouble of getting a renewed permit. Right, of course, but uh, as as I can't remember which of the justices pointed this out, the ruling came after the expiration date initially to begin with. Well, why wouldn't a party, I mean, if, if they understand that their permit to do what they want to do is going to expire, why would and they not? Justice, in all candor, I am not 100% confident that they haven't reapplied. I don't I don't know that for sure. I, I consulted with co-counsel regarding that. He was not aware that they did. That's a procedure that they can do without counsel and often do without attorneys. Um, so I can't say with 100% confidence that they didn't. I don't think that they did. I think I would have heard if but they have. As far as we know. As, as far as we know. Harkening back to Justice Wall's question, if, if they desired tomorrow to start the operations, they have no legal authority to do so, regardless of how this case comes out sure that i mean that's that would be correct okay yes other questions thank you thank you thank you to both counsel for your arguments in this case uh, the court will take this appeal under advisement